Now, what will be lost? A few examples. This is the Fifth Symphony of Beethoven. Uh, this is the first page of the Constitution and of the United States. We have learned how to live together in relative peace, at least sometimes. Um, we can move atoms around, so we have, we have amassed an enormous amount of technology. What you see here is just technology and, and nanotechnology. These are... Oh, sorry. <laughs> this is the same problem. Okay, paintings, arts, architecture, and so on. Uh, our knowledge, our scientific knowledge, this is uh, DNA. Uh, we know how we, where we come from. We know about Big Bang. We know our uh, nat nat uh, natural laws. We know so much. And most of this, if we do nothing, will just vanish. Sometime, someday, it will vanish. Um, now, looking to the past, we see what is happening, so without major catastrophes which might come. Um, Sophocles wrote about 100 tragedies, and there are seven left. And he had colleagues who wrote as many tragedies, um, and I don't know if these seven we have left are the best ones. Another uh, thing, we are around humanins since about six million years. And in the time span between six million years ago and 50,000 years ago, we have found about 150 remains of individuals. So in a few thousand years, a million years, not much will be left of us. And what is left is just a matter of coincidence. So if you don't do anything, there is no control what will be left. Now, the goal of this project, the Human Document Project, is to preserve knowledge over vast times. Now, what is vast? The lower limit is what can we do at best, and the maximum limit might be how long our Earth will be habitable, and that's about another 500 million years. Then the sun will be too hot, uh, CO2 will vanish out of the atmosphere, uh, and this will cause that there is no plant growth anymore, and that means that complex life will have a hard time. Um, ah. Okay. Thanks. This was, this was too much. Now, what can we do? Um, most of our knowledge is stored in books, and there are about 200 million book titles around. Um, plus minus a factor of two or so. And that's about 10 to the 15 bytes. And if you have these books stored in a library, you need 10,000 kilometers bookshelf. Um, it's not very convenient. But the point is, a book is OK for, with you, without any additional measures for a few hundred years. In 2,000 years, all books are gone, all of them. So you could carve them in stone, but then you would, would need pages of, say, one centimeter thick, and then these 10,000 kilometers would become 10 million kilometers. Um, but we have our modern nanotechnology, we can store all the books there are, all the books there are, in 1,000 of these, of these uh, uh, hard disks, which you can buy for 100 bucks at Multimate. And you could put them all into your own living room. You will never read them all, of course. But there's a catch. And the catch is that the data, which are stored magnetically, will fade away. The, the systems are designed such that they guarantee a validity of the data for 10 years. And then they will deteriorate. So that means over 20 years you can read 90% over 100 years, you can read 10% over 200 years, you can read nothing. Everything has gone. The same is with your CDs and DVDs, especially your own written DVDs. Of my own written DVDs, I can, I can throw away maybe out of 210 or so after 10 years, and they will deteriorate also. Um, this is not necessarily the case. I have here an example. 
of the interior of a meteorite. Uh, the oldest meteorite in our solar system is uh, have a uh, have a age of 4.5 billion years. Um, they are formed when the solar system has been formed. And this particular one is a stone from Mars, which came to Earth by some way, and you see here a structure, this one, with a length of 200 nanometers. From here to there is 200 nanometers. You need 50 of them on a row to meet the thickness of a hair of our human hair. Huh? And, and you see there are segments, about 20 segments, so each segment is about 10, 15 nanometers or so, and this could be seen as a bit of information. This has been formed between 2 and 4 billion years ago. So we can store information with a very high density for billions of years. It is possible. What to do? Yes. First of all, we would need robust media. So the magnetic media are worthless if you wouldn't to store data for a very long time. We do it in this way because we have found ways that are very cheap. It is not for nothing that you have to pay only 100 bucks for uh, one tenth of a percent of all existing books. Um, but robust media are also a very acute technological problem because there is really a need for high density storage which is faithful. There are laws which prescribe companies to, to store their data, in fact, indefinitely. And some, sometimes this is stated for 100 years, for 500 years. So there are laws. And we cannot just do it. So there is a need. Now, it is possible in, with our technology. This is work from my own lab. So this is a piece of a certain ceramic called silicon nitride, which is a very hard, very inert material. And we put inside this material dots of metal. In this case, we have chosen for tungsten. And then covered it again with nitrate. So these are buried dots, and these can be seen as bits of information. And we can make them with our technology with a size of, say, 50 nanometer or so, and then we can get all books there are, maybe on one single disk. Um, we are not that far, by the way. Um, we have treated, mistreated this thing, so in our lab we had put it in an oven and we looked what was happening at a high temperature and above 600 degrees something strange happens, but below it stays okay. Uh, we have a... Oh, I don't know if this works now. No, it doesn't. So, I had a movie which I cannot get running. No. So you missed the movie. Um, well, in fact, we had students, and students tried to bake an egg on top of this disk and then looked if the data disappeared or not. And no problem at all. They put it on a barbecue and so on, and, uh, well, that's just a nice movie. Um, now, these disks are brittle. Oh, by the way, we are not the only ones who are able to do this. There is a group in, uh, in, in Southampton who do this optically in quartz uh, in, in, in the United States. There is a group who etch it in metal and so on. So this is, there are many, many different possibilities to do this. All these systems must be protected. This is a container to store uh, nuclear waste. And they are also designed for a lifetime of many million years because nuclear waste stays radioactive so long. I have rather books in it than radioactive waste. Um, then there is en environmental interference, so even if you have something like this, you don't want to have a, uh, a volcano explosion right on top of it. You don't want to have it stored at a location where there are many earthquakes um, and so on. And there are some regions on Earth which are 
unchanged since three to, to four billion years, and these are called cratons. These are very big portions of the continents, about 100 kilometers thick, virtually free of earthquakes, not in this enormous time span, but within a million years or so, there will be very few earthquakes. So these are regions where we could store the information. A very big problem is in 2,000 years, there will be no one around, maybe a few scholars to, who speak English. And in one million years, there will certainly no one around to speak English. And if this system is found, there must be some, some way to decode the information. Now, there is an example how this has been done. This is a plug on a, a spaceship. Now has, it has now left the, uh, the solar system where you can see line drawings of people, and this is the spacecraft here to, to show them the relationship of our size and the spacecraft. This codes for the time and distance, and this codes in a certain way for the position of the Earth. And if they think in the same way, these aliens, then they will understand it. <laughs> um, if you show this image to an elephant, he won't recognize that this is a line drawing of a human. So it is very shaky if something, some alien can read this. But in a million years, there will no, be no intelligent rats. Certainly not. Maybe in one billion years. No, then they are gone. In 200 million years. Maybe. Maybe. And maybe they are unable to read it. But humans will be able to read it. So it is possible, in principle, to make a coding. And the biggest problem is maybe because each system is, is finite, you have to make a choice of what to preserve. You cannot preserve all data. It's just technologically impossible. And the amount of data we are creating, we heard a talk about it, uh, about it uh, is, is increasing maybe by a factor of two or three uh, but no, by a factor of two every two or three years. So you have to make a choice, and then if you want to do this, you have to think, who are they? And this is, again, too fast. Uh, who are we? This one, who are we? Now, this is the basic what I have to tell you. Now, if you want to go on, there are some limits, so if you want to make it uh, affordable, the system, maybe as big as this um, uh, container for radioactive waste with a height of five meter and diameter of two, one and a half meter or so. It fits into a living room. It must be easy to find. If it is impossible to find, it, it is not useful to do it. <laughs> but it must be protected so that it is difficult to destroy. So, uh, um, maybe you all remember uh, a few years ago the Taliban destroyed uh, uh, very nice things and people have burned libraries and so So this must be difficult to open and to destroy the information. And we hope that a society advanced enough to open it will be wise enough not to destroy the information before it is this decoded. Now, our benefits now, I told you that robust, affordable data storage is very much needed. There is a big problem with coding now. Who has a floppy disk at home? And who has a floppy disk drive that still works? Oh, okay, a few. A few. Who is hoping to be able to read this data files in 50 years? with the successor of Microsoft. <laughs> it's a big problem. Um, and I, mean, I, mean, I think it's important to take this as a chance to think about who we are, and what we are, and what we want, and what we find important. And then store this, and store this as a gift for people who came after us. And of course, I'm standing here because it's just a lot of fun to think about it. 
Thank you very much. Thank you.